go to today's numbers uh, and recount exactly uh, where we are, uh, I want to talk for a moment about what is at stake. And I think we know um, as this virus rises and is really this red tide going all the way across Ohio, um, that a lot of things are at stake. People's lives are at stake. Um, we worry about our hospitals starting to fill up. Um, we worry about long-term damage that people might have from, from the COVID who do in fact uh, recover. But as I go through the statistics today and kind of bring you up to date about what we're seeing uh, today, uh, I wanna ask you to, to think about something else that is clearly at stake. And that is whether our kids can be in school. Uh, that's really um, one of the things that certainly is at stake. Uh, and it really depends on what we're willing to do, our willingness to, to wear masks, our willingness to um, keep a distance, our willingness to avoid uh, gatherings where there might be spread, or if we are at gatherings, to, to wear a mask and, and to be careful. Because we truly do control the, the spread in the community. And the spread in the community is what determines what is going on in, in our schools. Um, some schools, because of high community spread, uh, have had to go remote because too many of their kids and teachers are out of school. Uh, in the last two weeks, at least 16 districts have made the decision to scale back to hybrid or fully remote models because of the spread in their communities. Other schools have had to change their plans for the year uh, due to spread in their communities. Just this week, for example, uh, school leaders in Toledo made the decision to keep their high schools closed through the end of the semester, uh, meaning that in Toledo, for these students, uh, they will have no in-person class for at least half of this year. Um, overall, we now have at least uh, 50 districts that are fully online right now with nearly 300,000 students unable to attend in-person classes. The important thing I think for us to remember is we can, we can change this uh, by more of us wearing masks, uh, more of us avoiding being in situations where there can be spread, avoiding large gatherings of, of people, uh, just, just really being careful. Uh, we, can, we can turn this down, we can turn this heat down. Uh, and we can get back to a simmer uh, of this virus instead of a flame starting to really, really come up. Because that flame is a direct threat to keeping our kids in, in schools. Uh, I believe that it should concern all Ohioans, and it concerns me, that so many of our kids are going to school remotely. While many kids can do well under these circumstances, many cannot. Uh, some of our poorest children who thrive in an in-person learning environment do great um, for a number of reasons. Maybe don't do nearly as well remotely. And it's not just our poor children. It, it's, it's many of our children uh, throughout the state just do better in school. We can control this by what we do every single day. Uh, we owe it to our children. We owe it to their future. We owe it to our state's future uh, to fight back against this virus, to not accept this as something that just has to be. It doesn't have to be this way. We can control this. We've done it twice before. We've knocked this thing down early on. And then three months ago, when it was starting to spike back up, we knocked it down again with very significant mask wearing in those parts of the state that we're seeing the most spread. Today, we're seeing spread virtually everywhere. So Eric, let's take a look at these numbers and bring everyone up to date on exactly where we are today. Today, uh, we're reporting 2015 new cases in Ohio. It was not long ago, <clears throat> excuse me, it was not long ago that we were at 1,000 cases a day and, and trending downward. As we can see from our 21-day trend chart, our numbers continue to rise at a rate that should concern all of us. We have 216 new hospitalizations reported in the past 24 hours. 
It's the highest number of hospitalizations we've ever reported. And there's over 50 hospitalizations more than the previous high that was back in July. In addition to that, we now have more people who have COVID who are in our hospitals, in the hospital beds than any other time during this pandemic. The 